Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carrie, and today I'm doing something totally different. I'm gonna be making soap. So my first love and my first hobby is obviously reading, but I have other hobbies and other interests, and I really wanna show that to you guys. So you saw a little bit with the body powder and a couple of little DIY tips and tricks here and there, but my first love and my favorite thing that I enjoy making is actual handmade cold process soap. And I, um, I've been a bit nervous to do this, but I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to talk to you guys through this and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, I have a book that I really, really want to talk to you in detail about. Hopefully there's not going to be major spoiler content in here, but I just really, really want to talk to you about this because it is so good. One of my favorite books of the entire year. So I'm going to be just making some soap and talking to you about this book and hopefully you guys enjoy this. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of this video. I do want to tell you up front that there are three different types of soap making. So the first is going to be melt and pour. That is the kind of soap that you can just buy at like Hobby Lobby and that kids can make where you just melt the soap, add some color and fragrance and then woo yeah you made your own soap. Okay, the second is going to be hot process. There is a process of soap where you add in your oils and your lye and you cook the lye and uh, you cook it basically in a crock pot and it gets kind of like this gel consistency and then you put it into a mold and then just a couple hours later you're able to cut the soap and then a, like a week or two later you can use it. It's a really neat process, uh, but it's not something that I personally enjoy making. Uh, it's just you can't get the swirls and the artistic uh, style as much as you can with cold process. What I make is cold process soap. It's the third method and it's by far my favorite. It is where you take your hard and your soft oils, you mix it with lye. I'm going to state this right now. You cannot make soap without lye. Lye is a caustic substance. It is used as a drain cleaner. It's used in uh, disposing of bodies. Like, I mean, this is like very caustic uh, rough substance, but you cannot have soap without it. Um, there's things like Dove Beauty Bars and whatnot. Beauty Bars are not soap. It's a detergent, and yes, it will clean your body, but it's not soap. So I just, I need to throw that out there. So you have to kind of just let it sit out on a shelf for six weeks, and it just sits out in the open on the shelf for six weeks fully to cure all of the water starts to evaporate from the soap. It becomes a very hard bar of soap. There is no lye in the finished product, of course. Uh, it goes through a saponification process and that's how we get soap. Uh, so now that I've kind of got the boring stuff out of the way, let me go ahead. I'm gonna set up the whole camera thing. I'll show you what I'm making today, kind of show you the colors I'm using and uh, let's get started. Okay. So first things first, I threw my hair up in a light ponytail, got my hair out of the way. I always wear gloves whenever I am making soap. And um, I'm just going to kind of go through a bit of the basic process with you while I add in some ingredients and everything, kind of tell you what I use. And here is all of my hard oils. And I have palm oil, coconut oil, cocoa butter, and shea butter in this one. And in my soft oils, I have uh, a tiny bit of castor oil, which helps with bubbles. I've got sweet almond oil and I have olive oil are my main uh, ingredients for my soft oils. And then I always add additives. I think these are the best things in the world for you. This is what helps make the bar nice and loving on your skin. So I always add collodial oatmeal. After collodial oatmeal, I always put in kale and clay. This clay helps with multiple things. It is nice and silky on the skin, and it also helps with the scent. It makes the scent stay into the soap longer, which is always a good thing. The last um, ingredient I will add in here is going to be my goat's milk powder. I love goat's milk. I think it is amazing for skin, so I always add in my goat's milk. This is my distilled water that I'm going to add my lye to to make my lye solution. So what I'm going to do in here is I always add in sugar and I stir, stir, stir. I add in one tablespoon of sugar for two pounds of soap. This is a bubble maker. My bars are super, super bubbly and I always think that this is one of the biggest reasons why is sugar. 
it really, really helps. So I have completely mixed and dissolved all of my sugar into my into my water. And the last additive I'm going to do is Tessa Silk. This is actual genuine silk from a uh, silkworm. And some people will actually crochet and stuff with this. I use this directly for um, putting into my bars. It makes my bars super silky. Love it. And it's just another additive that I always use. And I'm going to get my lye and we're going to go ahead and make our lye solution. This is my lye. I get food grade lye and it is from Essential Depot. And so if you are into soap making, highly recommend it. It's not a bad price. I always buy it in bulk so you'll see I have a whole bunch in the corner there. And I need 4.15 ounces of lye. Okay, and I'm going to add it in to my water. You never ever put your water to the lye. It will boil over. It's really, really bad news. Don't do that. So you always want to add your lye into your water. So now that it's in here, it's all gone to the bottom. This is going to turn super, super hot, really, really hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix this until my Tessa silk has completely dissolved. All right, now that that's done, um, what I'm gonna do, the method that I use is called the heat transfer method for cold process soap. So basically what I'm doing is I'm adding my extremely, extremely hot lye water into my hard oils, and then the hot lye water will dissolve the hard oils, and then I'll add in my soft oils later. There's different methods. You can also um, melt your hard oils and then let your lye water kind of cool down until they're both like a, within a, like 120 degrees. I think that method takes way too long and this method is just as quick and a lot easier. So this is the method that I use. I've been using it for probably two and a half years now and it has always worked for me. Um, I do want to give a couple of shout outs. So if you haven't really watched any soap making videos but you're interested in it, I highly, highly recommend Royalty Soaps. I think she does a great job. She's got an amazing personality. She's very, very kid friendly. Um, and I just really, really enjoy her videos. She's super popular on YouTube. So just type in Royalty Soaps and you will find her. I'll also link her down in the comments below. And then the other person I wanna give a huge shout out to is my personal mentor. And that is gonna be Jen from ANN Sets and Such. I will also link her channel down below. She actually now has her own business where she sells soap supplies and she is doing so well for herself. I'm so proud of her. Um, when I was first starting out in 2016, Jen had so many videos and she was just super open and honest and taught me everything I knew. Um, I, in fact, my major recipe is my own. I, I did my own recipes multiple times till I found out what I liked, but I started out with one of her recipes and then just kind of created my own from hers. Uh, I highly, highly respect her. So I will leave both of them in the comments below. If you want to watch more soap making videos, uh, the soap making community is also very, very big on YouTube. Um, and so it's a lot of fun to be able to see other makers create and it's such an artistic thing like there's so many different things you can do oh I totally forgot to mention that the scent I'm doing uh, it's called blonde moment from just scent but I call it iced raspberry champagne because that's kind of what it smells like it's uh, it's very berry very um, fruity it has like champagne undertones. It's a very, very pleasant fruity scent if you like that. Not much floral about it. It's just kind of very fresh and very berry scent. But I love the scent. Um, what I'm gonna do is I, I do create little mountain pour toppers. Uh, so I'll create like little balls for the tops of certain soaps or different like mermaid tails. This one I did little raspberries and I'll just put that on the top of my bars. 
and I have decided to do this magenta like crazy neon pink. I'm going to do gold and then I'm going to do white and then I'm going to mix my white with my neon pink and create a really soft baby pink as well for it. This is going to be a girly girly bar of soap. I I'm still thinking I might do piping, but I might not. Um, I I haven't really decided if I want to do piping for this soap. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure really what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of wing it as I go, which is how I do a lot of things. And typically is how I get like the best designs is just by going, like me just, kind of contemplating it as I'm going along and going, oh, that sounds like a really neat idea. It just kind of pops in at the top of my head. It's very artistic and creative in that way. It's similar to art where you can just do just about any design you want with it. So. Oh, I've got this really cool soap to show you guys. So I, y'all know I'm going to book Bonanza in um, 2021, right? And I am super excited to go and I've been thinking about doing something for my favorite authors. And I wanted to do something for, for with soap, but I, I've decided I wanna do kind of like a gag gift. So I bought these awesome molds. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I think that's hilarious. So um, I think I'm going to just make some random. I also have this one. <laughs> just I think that's so cool <laughs> and just make some of these for some of my favorite authors and give that to them uh, I don't know like I don't want to offend them but at the same time I just think that it's funny and it's like actual genuine 3d so they actually like you know have to use the motions to be able to use the soap I just think it's funny I don't know but I like I don't want to offend them at the same time. But they're romance authors. Like they write steamy stuff for a living. So could they really be offended by that? Mm, I don't know. I don't think they would. But yeah. I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's a good idea. Okay. So I'm going to just very gently mix this. It is almost completely all blended. You do see there is some chunks in there, which is no big deal. All I'm going to do is use my stick blender and I'm just going to mix up those last little chunks. Okay. And then I'm going to go here. in the additives to my soft oils. Let me see if I can push this down a little further so you can see better. Okay, so now I'm just going to mix in my soft oils to my hard oils now that my hard oils are melted. And I'm just going to blend everything good and together. Now, I've been making soap long enough that I can already tell that this is already blended and it is good to go. There's a very, very light trace on it. You can't really pick it up on the camera because it is so light, but this is all blended and it is ready to be made into soap. So, I'm just going to get as much of this as I can out. You don't ever want to waste any soap. Okay. And I'm just going to put that in there just like that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is just kind of blend this all here. I'm going to get out a couple of different bowls. So I'm going to use this again. Yeah, okay. So white, light pink, you know, magenta pink, and then gold. My gold and my white to kind of be accent colors. I want it to be a mainly pink bar of soap. And as you can tell, it is getting thicker. You can see it almost has like it's lighter than pudding, but it, like at the very beginning stages maybe of pudding is what I would consider this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this up into what I think should be how much each color should have. Maybe about that much and maybe about that much. 
So I want the crazy pink to be my major color. So it's gonna be the big one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna get a little spoon and I am just going to add in a little bit of colorant, let's say about mm, that much. And as you can tell, this is some crazy pink. And I'm also going to do a baby pink. So I'm gonna mix in some of this. And I think this just makes the absolute prettiest like little baby pink color too when you add in your white. So for my white, I use titanium dioxide as my white. I've already got it mixed in and ready to go here. So this is my white. I'm going to go ahead and add it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add it here. Okay. And then last but not least, I've got my gold. And I've got some little samples that I need to use up. So I'm just going to go ahead and start using these. Go ahead and put this one in here. This one is called Silken Gold. We'll see how it works. Okay. Y'all, this smells good. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to add in my fragrance oil. So I'm just going to mix in about that much there. That much there. 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 And the rest of the main one. All the colors get some of the fragrance oil. And last thing to do is blend it up. And the way that we blend it is by the colors. So I'm going to do white first. Then I'm going to do my... Yeah, I'm going to do white first. Then I'm going to do my gold. I'll rinse it out pretty good. And then I'll do my pinks. So let's get to it. This is where it can get messy because obviously there is this is a little tiny old thing. Okay. Move the white out of the way and go on to the gold. I think that gold looks pretty. Nice kind of a gold shimmer to it. It's not always a perfect gold, but you know, gold is never going to like be gold in soap because soap is a kind of a tan base. And so you're not going to have something like super sparkly, shimmery in here. It's just not going to work. I'm going to just quickly <laughs> All that is is just some water that I've got where I can mix it up and hopefully not have as much bleed through with the different colors. Now I'm going to do my light baby pink. Barbie pink, which is really kind of fitting for the scent because it just reminds me of girly girl, teenager, Barbie doll kind of color and look to it. It's such a pretty scent. Pretty, pretty feminine scent. All right, let's move this one out of the way and let's do my bright pink. <laughs> Y'all, you can see this color a mile away. It is neon, like neon. I love it though. I love, love, love this color. It is one of my favorites. I am just utterly okay with this girly shit. Okay, so that is all the blending I'm gonna do with this 
scent. Okay, I've decided I want to do a swirl inside. And you know what? Ooh, I really, really want to pipe this. Okay, okay. I'm getting an idea. I'm getting an idea. Okay. So what if I took some of the bright pink and some of the baby pink and mixed it together and piped that on top? Oh, yes. And then do a little bit of it. Okay, I got an idea, guys. I've got an idea. See, this is what I love about soap making is because I can literally come up with a shit on the fly and I freaking love it. Okay, so here's where the creativeness comes in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swirl. This is a little swirling tool that I use. It comes up with some of the prettiest swirls I've ever seen. I am going to mix these colors a little bit all together here. Mix, mix, mix. This scent works so great because it's not like, it's still nice and fluid. You can see how liquidy it is. So it is perfect for being able to do all of the swirls and all the fun things that I like to do. Some fragrance oils will actually make the uh, this soap itself clump up really fast and you have to work super fast. And this is just not one of them. It is beautiful to work with. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I hope it's coming out on camera as good as it looks here. I'm really enjoying this so far. That's as far as my dang tripod will let me go down. I hope, I hope you're able to see this okay. And you can't really have champagne without having a little bit of gold, can you? But I think I want to do like an actual like pink, those pink colors with an actual shimmery gold mica line on the top. I'll show you what I mean whenever I do it because it will actually be golden and shimmery. And I think that'll look really, really cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to do the pink as my base. So what the color that you put at the very bottom is always going to be kind of a base color. It is kind of what will be the majority of the color will end up looking like. I want to do a line of white next. Kind of go high up so that it goes into the pink. Then I want to do a nice little bit of the baby pink. Oh, this is going to be cute, you guys. I can't even tell you. This is just going to be so stinking cute. Okay, nice and a little bit of gold. And then I'm just going to do one more layer. Nice, just one little line of the pink. Okay. save the rest for the top there, but I do want to add just a tiny bit more of this. Whoa, shit. Went a little off balance there, didn't I? Okay. There, and then let's go ahead and finish it up with a little more on the white. Oh, guys, I totally forgot to talk about this book I was going to talk to you guys about. Okay, so I finished one to watch today. 
and I freaking loved it. This was a new to me author. This book has been everywhere. This book is kind of similar to The Bachelorette in a way, but it's got a big heroine in it, and I just, <laughs> I wasn't ready for the emotions this book brought out of me. First of all, I have read a lot of books with um, supposedly like bigger characters in it, and then like they start talking about, oh yeah, curvy and this and that, and and then like halfway through or three fourths of the way through, they mention their pant size being like a size ten, and it's like, oh give me a break. Like, I mean, no offense to you know girls like that, but they're that that's not big. Like there's that to me, like I can't identify with that. Like the average size for a woman is like a size 12 to 14. And so tell me how a size 10 is representing bigger girls in any way, shape or form. It doesn't. Uh, but this book, I felt so seen. Um, the emotions that this book wrung out of me was insane. I cried so hard in this book. Um, let me kind of talk more in detail about it here in just a second, but I want to go ahead. So what I'm going to do here, I did that to pop out all of the air bubbles, if there was any air bubbles in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this tool and I'm just going to go down and back up, down, back up, down back up and then I'm just going to go in and then just maybe do a couple swirls. Here we go. You never know how this is going to turn out until you cut it and no two different batches of soap will ever look the same. You can have it with the same colors but they just they, they'll never look the same. I love that because you just never know what you did or how good you did until you get in there and look whenever you cut into it. And the weight can be killer, guys. Just saying. The weight can absolutely be, like, cruel. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe up the edges a little so I can pipe on top. And I'm going to try to smooth out this top now. This will just make it easier for me to pipe on the top. Okay, so now while, while I'm getting ready for the piping and what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit more about this book. So, first of all, B is our heroine, and it starts out with her, um, and she is kind of in love with this guy. And it's this guy that she's gone to college with. She has always had feelings for him, but she was the big girl, and he's like the pretty boy on campus. And um, so she's seen him date a whole bunch of model type of women. And, um, you know, she's kind of just given up on the whole idea of them being together. He now has a fiance and he comes down and something happens and they're together for a night. It's so relatable in the fact that he is this really popular guy who looks good, who all the girls want, and he wants her but he doesn't feel like she is somebody that he can have a life with because of her size. And you think that this shit doesn't happen in this day and age, but that's absolutely untrue. Uh, in fact, I, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here, but I just kind of have to talk about it. And um, there was a guy recently, very, very recently in my life, who was stunning beautiful... I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I'm talking his body could be on the cover of our books type of gorgeous. He had this stunning body, pretty face. He was a good looking guy. And I was like, what is this guy seeing me? Like, we talked for a couple of months. I'm, and I'm sitting here thinking, man, this has got to be a scam. Like, there's no way this guy's actually into me. But he was. Like, he was hardcore into me. He was interested in my body. He was interested in me. And I, I finally, like, I started to feel that way, too. I was proud of myself. I started losing a little bit of weight. I mean, I was looking 
good. Um, at least I thought so. Like he gave me confidence and I started to feel really good. And we started talking, but of course the pandemic kind of stopped us from seeing one another, but we talked for a couple of months. Uh, we did meet up and we had an amazing time and it was picture perfect. I was so excited for this guy. Like this was somebody I truly thought maybe I could fall for. Uh, we didn't go on a date or anything because, once again, the pandemic was going on. And so we just met at a local lake and we hung out for a while and it was awesome. And um, then, you know, everything started to reopen. And I thought, okay, you know, like this, maybe we can go on a date pretty soon. And this guy wanted to hang out with me. Like, he always wanted to hang out. So we got together. Um... But I started to, when we got together, I started to kind of feel, not dirty, but used. Like, I was good enough to be in his bed. I was good enough to be with him. But I wasn't good enough for him to take me out on dates. I wasn't good enough to be seen with. And um, it it was absolutely true. Like, it got to the point where the last time... I just, I, I kind of felt dirty when I left. Like, I just felt utterly unwanted. And, um, I mean, he still, like, he still tries to contact me as of last week. Like, he is sending me messages. He still wants to get together with me. But he doesn't want to be seen with me. Like, it's almost like he's embarrassed that he's attracted to me. And that is just simply not okay with me. Okay, so I'm not showing you faces because, you know, like, that would be wrong, but, uh, that, I'm, like, genuinely not kidding, like, the dude is, like, utter perfection, like, he's gorgeous, but he, um, he acted like a jerk after a while and so anyway that that's a long story just to say that you know some people who may not be bigger and may not have to go through all the criticism that bigger girls do like they don't see it that in general society thinks that we are not as good or not as beautiful or not as worthy of love all right, so to finish this discussion, um, I am still waiting on my soap. It is like still way too runny. I can't pipe it. So while I'm waiting for that to set up, I want to go ahead and finish kind of our conversation that I was having. You saw the picture of that guy. Um, and that's kind of a long way of showing that what it was in this book to me and in my own personal experience with being bigger is that it was so realistic in that I felt very unwanted and very dirty out of that whole relationship. And I, after the last time that I felt like that, I just, I was like, you know what? This isn't working for me. I'm worth better than that. Like, I'm worth being able to take out on dates. I'm worth being seen with. I'm worth your friends meeting me. And if you can't feel that way, then I'm just done. Um... And he, he still contacts me, like I said, um, as early as just last week. And I just kind of stopped responding at this point. Like, um, I don't want to be anybody's dirty secret. I just don't. So, anyway, all of that is to say that this book uh, with this heroine, she had this guy who, like, utterly wanted her behind closed doors but had a fiance who was a perfect you know size 10 and had this perfect life exterior but he wanted this girl but she didn't fit into what he thought he needed in life and um he kind of ruined it for himself and i love the fact that they had that in there i love the fact that it had um other like blog posts about oh but can we talk about how um, her size is not healthy and she's not 
um, you know, she's, she's not showing a healthy weight to her children. Like, to me, that totally reminded me of, like, the whole Lizzo situation and then Julia Michaels or whatever, that trainer who came out and was like, but let's, let's be honest here. She's not healthy. She's not this. She's not that. And it's just, it's utterly disgusting to me that you have to put somebody down constantly because, and all in the name of health, whenever you don't really know if that person is healthy or not. You don't know what their medical situation is. And it just, it utterly disgusts me that all of these people fat shame in a way where it's like, oh, but I'm just worried about your health. Like, bullshit. No, you're not. You're wanting to fat shame. Um, and so this book really, really, really affected me. I cried my eyes out. It was, it was so good. Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I cannot recommend it enough. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And to me, it was a romance. Yes, it's very, very Bachelorette. Um, I highly recommend the audiobook. I don't know if I would have liked it as much had I read the physical book because there is like a lot of blog posts and different like podcasts and different things that are kind of like, but whenever you listen to it in audiobook format, it is just so good. It is so, so, so good. Uh, cannot recommend that book enough. It, it doesn't have any steamy moments, um, but it's one of my favorite books of the entire year. I highly recommend it. I have never felt so seen as a big plus size person. Uh, I, I genuinely felt the rep. Um, also, the insecurities that she went through. Like, she was this strong person who was very body, body positive, but you can still be strong and still have insecurities. Um, you can still be okay being a bigger person and still think that you're beautiful, but still have insecurities. Like there are days that I'm just full of confidence. I'm like, oh, I got this. Like, I, you know, I've got my full red lipstick on. My eyes are popping. Like I, I look good and I, I know it. But then like there's days where it's like, oh God, look at my arms. Look at my stomach. I wish I lost like 50 pounds overnight like you know like all these unrealistic expectations and I can go from feeling like super super confident to like three hours later just feeling so down on myself and so rough on myself and, and then be questioned about it be like oh you know you're you're supposed to be body positive yeah but everybody has good moments and bad moments and um you know like it's it's just human to to do that and I just, yeah, I really, really, really felt everything about this book. Um, I like the weight part of it was just so realistic in my opinion. Uh, it, it couldn't have been better done in my opinion. So also it does end in an HEA. I was really concerned and confused about it because everybody's like, oh no, it doesn't. It's like all about herself, but it's really not like it does end in a happily ever after. Just saying. Uh, I, I don't want to give anything more about that away. Um, she really goes through a journey and I'm really proud of her. <laughs> and I just, I really love this book. Okay, y'all. So it's been a little while. Um, I might be getting a little impatient, but we're going to try it. So all I did was I just put it in some press and seal um, wrap and I just put the colors side by side. So it's kind of dual colors, pink and then darker pink. I have added a little bit of my mica colorant with some light oil, which is called a mica drizzle, and this is going to give it a really pretty gold shimmer. And then I'm going to add in these little pink balls on the top. So now that you have an idea of what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and finish this up. So I'm just going to start piping and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's... Can see it a little better that way.
kind of so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to make room for seven of them. So seven perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna do it right here on top. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and then let's go up a little higher. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to say that that's enough, and then what is left over here, I'm going to just put in a little mold. I'm going to do that in a second, but now I'm just going to put one. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to do a little mica drizzle on it now with the gold. God, that's pretty. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want there to be enough where it's maybe there's not enough on certain bars or something. enough. Maybe just do a bit here. Yep. I could do this all night long, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to stop it there. And then I do want to add in a little bit of glitter because this is a girly bar. Just gonna add in a little bit of glitter here. This is cosmetic glitter, it will not stay on you, it will just stick to the top of the bar and then come off in the drain. Alright, and so this is my iced raspberry champagne soap. I am just going to take this extra piping. I've got these really cute little massage bar soaps. So I'm just going to pop it in one of these and just bang it out.
All right, that's it for me. I will uh, be back tomorrow to cut the soap, and so uh, I'll see you here in just a minute. Hey everyone, so it's the next day. I have been making sugar scrub, which is probably what you're seeing in the background. I've sanitized this area, and I'm getting ready to cut my soap. I am super excited about this. I think at least the top of it turned out gorgeous. Um, I hope, if nothing else, you at least enjoyed the creative process of this. Please let me know if you enjoyed it, because I sure enjoyed making it. So, that's what it looks like, the full bar. I am so excited, you guys. I think this is turning out gorgeous. So I cut these into one inch bars. I was making sure that it is all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my first cut. Oh my goodness. That turned out so pretty. I'm so excited, you guys. This is probably my favorite soap I've made so far and I've been making soap for like four years now so I'm I'm really impressed with it I think it turned out really really pretty this is a bug cutter I don't think he's making them anymore I love the, my little bug cutter though okay This just turned out so pretty. I could not be happier. Like seriously, I could not be happier. Yeah, that just, it's gorgeous. <laughs> if I do say so myself. I'm a little partial seeing as how it's my design and I made it, but I do think it's gorgeous. And it smells so good, you guys. Like, seriously, it's super berry scented. So if you're a fruity person, this scent is just gorgeous. The soap is gorgeous. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over it. It's really, really pretty. I swear the a lot of my favorite designs are designs that I make up on the fly, and I really did just, um, well, I mean, you guys watch the process. Like, I completely just made this up as I went along, and I'm super impressed with it. So this has to just go on my shelf and cure now for the next six weeks, and then it will be ready to be put up on my Etsy shop. and go away to its new home. All right, there's the final bar. And then here's my little end piece. I will cut this in half and it gives me a couple little samplers to give out in the future to uh, people who are interested. I always give out a sampler of a soap that I'm recently made whenever you purchase. So these will go in little sampler sets. All right, that is it. Uh, let me know what you thought. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, I will talk to you guys very soon.